life. We thank you for your protection and for your guidance. We thank you because you have not allowed the enemy to triumph over us. What a mighty God we serve. What an awesome God you are. We appreciate you. Heavenly Father, we have come to your presence again today. We pray that you will help us. We pray that you will guide us. We pray that you will speak to us. We pray that you will teach us by your spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus, Satan, we bind you. We bind you in the name of Jesus. And we cast you out of this place in the name of Jesus. We come before our Father. We come before the Savior of man. We say, Lord, let inspiration flow. We say, Lord, let there be revelation knowledge. We say, Lord, that which you have for us today, help us to grab speed. Help us to understand this. Help us to apply it in our daily lives. Help us to continue. And let your name be glorified, O God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you because you have answered. Blessed be your name, your name, and your name forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to specially welcome everybody to our Friday Bible study. It's an exciting time in God's presence. Friday Bible study is a time to enjoy and to rightly divide the word of truth. According to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, it says, study to show your, yourself approved unto God, a workman that need not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. It doesn't matter how wrong your life is. It doesn't matter how limiting your abilities may be. It doesn't matter how inadequate you may seem or you may appear or you may think of yourself. Anytime you, have, you are grazed with the opportunity to deliver God's message to God's people, always rightly divide it. Because we can wrongly divide it to reflect our inadequacies, to reflect our shortcomings, but then we become the first to be judged by God. So when we have opportunity as custodians of God's word to hear, to deliver his word, this is no ordinary opportunity. This is a huge opportunity, and this places us in the front line on the judgment day that God will have to start with us. For judgment, we have to begin from his house. So this is very, very important that we rightly divide the word of truth. Welcome again to Friday Bible Study. We have been talking about the broad theme, stewardship. We took our, our main text from 1 Timothy chapter 2, chapter 4, verse 2, or so, or so 2, verse 4. <laughs> So we see, moreover, it is expected that in stewardship, a man be found faithful. So that's very, very, very important. Faithfulness. We started talking about what stewardship means, and then we started talking about uh, the qualities of a good steward. We talked about so many qualities. Today, we are going to believe God to, to be within the time that we have been given. But we have a very, very important topic, a very important topic to look into today. Sometimes it can be so controversial, and sometimes it can become somehow uh, uh, a topic that breaks and makes people weep and cry. I have ministered on this topic before, and I have seen people shed tears. Yeah. I have thought on this before, and I have seen people cry. I've seen people cry. It is okay to cry. It is okay to shed tears because most times when the word of God comes, it brings the reality of our experiences to, to the fore. And when a man comes face to face with his, our experiences, his human nature gives way. So this is very, very important. Today, I will be speaking on a topic that if we are not careful as stewards, we become victims of this topic. 
if we are not careful, we become, we begin to exhibit this kind of qualities and we are not supposed to exhibit it. It is a quality of a bad steward, not the good steward, because a good steward will not do this. But if a good steward is not careful, he can be lured into doing this kind of things. And once he becomes a victim of this, he begins to become, um, it becomes a problem. The topic we'll be looking at today is dealing with false accusations. Dealing with false accusations. Yes, I can just feel and hear the sigh of some people right from here. A very deep one. Mm. Yes, it is important we talk about this. It is important we, we, we look into this topic. Because I have experienced firsthand the hard knocks that have come through false accusations. I have seen people go down because of false accusation. I have seen marriages destroyed. I have seen churches emptied. I have seen friendship scattered. I have seen families broken to pieces, thrown apart because of false accusations. False accusations. False accusations. I have seen marriages in chambers because of false accusations. I have seen people, I've seen broken trust. I have seen businesses that have been destroyed and partnerships that have been broken as a result of false accusations. It is my prayer that the Lord will help us today. And the Lord will help us so that I will be able to express it the way the Lord has placed it in my heart. I pray that I don't break in between into tears because this is a very, very deep topic for me personally. This is a topic I rather listen to somebody else to teach. Why I begin to, to begin to look at my past, my present, and my future, and the things that God has taken me through. Honestly, when the Lord was dealing with me on this, I began to, to ask myself, Lord, I don't think I have appreciated you enough. Because as a pastor and as a general overseer of Mission House, and as a young boy, I have experienced false accusations. Some kind of accusations that looks like, what is going on here? Was I there? I can't even imagine this kind of thing. But you see, as we go deep into this, we begin to see the other side of it. We'll take our test, and I, our pastor will please read for us again today, Luke chapter 19, verse 8, and the Revelation chapter 12, verse 10. We would like to start from Luke chapter 19, verse 8. Luke chapter 19, verse 8. Dealing with false accusations. Dealing with false accusations. John chapter 13. John I, chapter 19, 19, 19 verse 8. John 19 verse 8, it says, When Pilate therefore heard that, heard that saying, he was the more afraid, mm. and went again into the judgment hall and said unto Jesus, mm. When art thou? Where did you well, come Jesus from? Jesus gave him no answer. Mm. Where did that you was, come from? That's verse 8, isn't it? I read 8 and 9. All right. All right. Uh, is that Luke? Did you read Luke? No, I read John 19. Sorry, Luke chapter 19, verse 8. Because I was wondering, it's almost the same account. However, Luke chapter 19, you know, Luke is a doctor. He, he presented it verbatim. He was, he was actually saying it exactly 
what the disciples and the apostles deliver to him. Luke 19, verse 8, sir. Thank you. Luke 19, verse 8. And Zacchaeus stood mm -hmm. and said unto the Lord, Yes. Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. Mm. And if I have taken anything from any man yes. by false accusation, mm. I will call him fourfold. Amen. Revelation chapter 12, verse 10. Revelation chapter 12, verse 10. This is popular. Revelation chapter 12, verse 10. Yes, sir. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, uh -huh. Now is come salvation and strength, uh -huh. and the kingdom of our God, mm. and the power of his Christ. Mm -hmm. For the accuser of our brethren is cast mm. down. Mm. He accused them before our God day and day night. And night. May the Lord bless his word into our hearts in Jesus' name. Now, what is false accusation? False accusation is a claim or a wrongdoing against someone that is not true. I repeat, a false accusation is a claim or a wrongdoing against someone that is not true. You see that this is different from accusation. An accusation is a claim by someone. But false accusation is a claim or a wrongdoing against someone that is not really true. The place that we read was talking about Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was a short man, like people always humorously say in, in Sunday school, the shortest man in the Bible. <laughs> He was so sure that he needed to climb a tree for Jesus to see him. But it, I don't think his height was what made him climb the tree. It was his passion to meet Jesus that made him climb the tree. That being said, the Bible said when Zacchaeus met with Jesus, he said to, to Jesus, he said, the half of my goods I give away to the poor. And if I have taken taking anything from anybody by false accusation. That is it. By false accusation. How are you able to take things from people by saying false things and wrong things and lying against them? That's false accusation. But Zacchaeus presented to us here very clearly with, in his own words. He said, Master, if I have taken anything from anybody by false accusation, I will return it fourfold. And in Revelation, he was talking about the accuser of the brethren. There are five things I want us to know about Satan today. There are five things I want us to know about Satan. Number one, Satan is a thief. Number two, Satan is a killer. Number three, Satan is a destroyer. Number four, Satan is a liar. Number five, Satan is the accuser of the brethren. Now, the first theory I just mentioned is in John chapter 10, verse 10. John 10, 10, capsule those ones very well. John chapter 8, verse 44, capsule the fact that Satan is a liar. All the things I'm going to say today in this teaching, they are anchored on these five things. I call them the five ministry of Satan. You may look inside the Bible and you will find more. However, this is very important. This is very, very important. That you understand that Satan is a liar. In fact, I could have put that in the first, at the beginning. He's a liar. He's a liar. If you don't know anything about Satan, know this is a liar. Satan is a liar. He is an accuser of the brethren. He is the accuser. Brethren, false accusation is dangerous and is a wicked thing. 
If you have not been a victim of false accusation, then you are yet to experience some very hard knocks in life. It is not something to experience. It is not something you want to, to, to play with. Ministers of God especially must be ready for false accusations. I repeat, you are a minister, you are a Christian, you are a true Christian, you are a child of God, be ready. However, this is not only happening among Christians. False accusations everywhere. False accusation is a destroyer of any good thing. False accusation is a destroyer of anything that is good. Anything that is good. False accusation will destroy it. I have seen people abandon their mother to die because somebody called the woman a winch. I have seen people that have, oh my God, false accusation can destroy. It can wreck a marriage. It can wreck a marriage. Don't wish for it if you have not seen it because it is evil, it is wicked, it is dangerous. It is a destroyer of marriages, relationships, churches, businesses, friendships, great men and great gifts. Listen, there are great men of God that have been destroyed by false accusations. False accusation? <laughs> but let, let, me, let, me, let me establish this for you. Satan is behind every false accusation. I repeat, Satan, Satan is behind every false accusation. So many years ago, in precisely in 1944, in South Carolina, there was this 14-year-old boy by the name George Tiny. He was falsely accused by the colonists at that time that he murdered two white children. And these two white children were around his age grade also. One of them was seven years, and the second one was 11 years. He was a small boy too. He was 14 years old. He was the first person to be electrocuted on an electric chair in 1944. However, listen, however, 70 years later, Josh Tiny was, it was found, it was discovered that he never committed the offense. 70 years later, 70 years after, Yes, I know what is in your mind. Evil, wicked, devil, very evil and wicked people. Yes, you are right. You are right. That is what false accusation does. It cut short great destinies. It cut them short. It cut them short. False accusation is painful, brother. Let me tell you the truth. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, false accusation is dangerous and is painful. It's hard. It can discourage you. Do you know how many people have stopped going to church? Some people don't even believe God again because of false accusation. It can kill. Do you know how many people have killed themselves, taken their own life, committed suicide because of a false accusation? False accusation. Listen, brother. Listen, sister. Uh, Daddy and mommy, false accusation is a terrible thing. It's a terrible thing. It's a terrible thing. So many years ago, I was a small boy. I think I was 11 years old or 10 years old at the time. And then, like we always play ball in my area in Nigeria, Benin City. So I went out playing with friends, and we went to the house of some of my friends, while we were there, we were playing ball. We played we play soccer, and we went to the house we were playing. As children always play. The following day, early hours of the morning, I don't know what happened. Some, one of my brothers came to call me. He said, Grandpa is calling you. Grandma is calling you. The mommy is also calling you. And then I went outside right in front of our family house. Here was this man. This middle-aged man 
with his daughter and the bed sheet from his house. He said to my, my grandfather and my grandma and to my mom, my dad was in Lagos State, the same Nigeria. And he said, they said to, to, to my parents, they said, your son came to my house, slept with my daughter. This girl was also a very small girl, maybe seven years or eight years old. On my bed is a taboo in our family. It is never done in the place where we came from. So this is what your son did. I hope all of you understand the kind of consequences of this thing. I didn't know where the slap came from. I can't explain where, I don't know. All I heard was a serious spanky slap on my face. And then I fell to the ground. It was my mom. Nobody wanted to hear my side of the story. Nobody wanted to listen to me. I began to cry. I said, I did not do it. I am not the one. I didn't even enter these people's room. I don't know what is going on. What is happening? What is going on? I don't, I know I went to that house. I played in the, we play soccer, but I don't know this kid child. I don't know this kid. I didn't do it, but nobody would listen to me. My grandfather looked at the man and said, my son said he didn't do it. My grandson said he didn't do it. He said, well, go. We will send messengers from our delegates from our family to your house, to your family. And we will do the necessary thing that has to be done. But remember, my son said, my grandson said he didn't do it. Is the man kept yelling at the top of his voice that every other child that they played with said he did it. I kept on crying. I kept on crying. But my grandfather didn't lay a finger on me. But the other, my grandma and my, and my, my mom, oh, I thought the ground would open. I thought I would not even survive the beating because it was coming from different corners. I was beating black and blue for what I knew nothing about. To cut the long story short, seven days later, the man died. I was not, I'm not saying this testimony because the man died. I am telling you the danger of false accusation. That child became an orphan. He was already, she was already motherless in the first place. Her mama died. And the father, the only one that she, she had, died also. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, uh -huh. false accusation is evil. False accusation is dangerous. False accusation can, can cause damage that can be irreparable. Irreparable damage, 70 years. After 70 years, that boy was found innocent, but he was gone. Let me quickly give you an example. Examples of some people in the Bible that false accusation killed. Because when the Lord was talking to me on this, some stewards in the church can gang up together against one and lie. And some stewards in a house, also in a household, can gang up together and lie against one. All because they need favor, because they need support. Listen, false accusation is evil. You will hear somebody doing well, a minister doing well, or before you know it, one accusation from nowhere will come out, boy, and this great gift, this great singing talent, before you know it, is dead, is quenched. The fire is gone. The ability is gone. Nobody is hearing the name again. All because of a rumor, because of an accusation that was not true. Even people from within the same church will crucify him. Of course. 
the Bible says when Jesus preached one message, he said, people, people abandoned him. And he looked at some of his disciples that remained. He said, ah, you two, you, will you not go? And they said, to whom shall we go? We are your stewards. We cannot be like them. You will see somebody's business that is booming. All of a sudden, a false accusation will come up. Some people just believe that for their business, their new business to rise, they need to pull down another one. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Listen, the false accusers don't go unpunished. Never become a contributor to any matter you don't know the origin. I beg you in the name of God. Don't, when will you carry another person's judgment upon your head? Number one, First Kings chapter 21, from verse 1 to 25. It's a very long reading, but I'm talking about Naboth. Naboth. First Kings chapter 21, from verse 1 through to 25. When you get to sit down, take your Bible, read this place very well. It was false accusation that Jezebel used to take down Naboth. It was false accusation. This was a young man. He was an orphan. His mother died. And before his father died, his father was able, he managed to buy one small parcel of land. And that parcel of land, the father, you know, it was not, it was not intentional. It, the parcel of land happened to be close to the palace of Ahab, the king of Israel. And then he said, Ahab went to Naboth. The father warned Naboth before he died. Don't sell this land to anybody. Don't give it away. This is the only thing that carried the name of our family. Look, the father told Naboth, Naboth, you and this land, it is only two of you that I have. Naboth, this land, please. No matter how hungry you are, don't sell the land. It, this is your inheritance. Most of us, we, are, we, we, know, we know what inheritance means. We know. And one day, Ahab the king came and said, Naboth, give me this land. I will give you another parcel of land in another place. Naboth said, I'm sorry, oh, kingly forever. Please, I cannot. My father warned me. This is the only thing we have. Please, sir. I don't have the throne. I don't have all the women. I don't have all the money. I am not so rich. Please, it's only this one we have. Please, sir. He said, I will give you money also for it. He said, sir, please, nothing. I, I will not give it up. Please, I'm sorry. Ahab went home. He could not eat. He will not eat. He will not drink. He will not sleep because of somebody else's property. And then on this case, the wife came and said, of course, you know the name of the wife. Oh, you don't know. I should tell you the name of the wife. Uh, the name of the wife is Jezebel. You know Jezebel? Yes. Yes, Jezebel. Jezebel said, what is wrong with you, my husband? He said, I meet Naboth. I asked Naboth to give me his the land. He said, no. I asked Naboth to sell it. He said, no. The wife said, my husband, wash your face. Bath. Come and eat food. I will give you the land tomorrow. Ah! I will give you the land tomorrow. You don't have gone. I will give you the land tomorrow. I know you are in control of the military. You are not going to send the military to kill an Israelite for his own property in broad daylight. So Jezebel concocted what Jezebel is, is smart at doing, is good at doing. People were paid to frame up Naboth. Brother, uh, hello brother, does this sound more like you? Yes, that day, that time, that thing, that situation, that issue. Yes. Yes. Nobody believed you. Mm, nobody believed you. Do you know the generation we live in? This generation believed the accusers more than the accused. This generation, people judge you before they hear you. It is the generation. You know this generation I'm talking about? The generation I'm talking about. Oh, a generation where sinners accuse sinners of committing sin. Mm. This is the generation I'm talking about. Nobody cares to hear your own side of the story. They just label you a bad person. 
I pray for somebody who is hearing me today. May your truth not be late. May your truth not come out after you have died. Nabot was cut short. Jezebel paid people to lie, to frame up. There are many people that are being framed up every day. What about politics? Oh, many people say that's dirty game. What do you think make politics dirty? Because there are dirty people that play in the, in the, in the field of politics. They won't allow the good ones to thrive. Once you become an enigma, once you become, and they see you as a potential threat to them, even though you don't even have them in mind, you are just doing your own, they go to your past. They dig out all, in fact, the negative stuff about you. They bring it out and they sell it to these wonderful media houses. Oh, yes. Whether it's electronic media, the print media, they are there. They are there. They begin to blow it. They blow it. The Lord will help us. The Lord will help us. Do you know what false accusation is? They, there are people, they will take one little truth, they will mix it up with lies, and they will nail you to the wall. When they are nailing you to the wall, they have followers already. In fact, your wife can be one of their followers. Your husband can be one of their followers. Your children can believe, look, false accusation, may you not be swallowed by it. Look, there are People that when they say things about you, your hand and your leg is tied. You cannot escape. May God help you. May God help you. May God help your marriage. May God help your husband. This message, I want those, especially those who are in charge of people, those who are leading people, those who are married, those single sisters, those single brothers, I pray, open your ears and listen. Those ministers of gospel, those pastors and ministers, listen, I beg you. For this short life I have been in, I've been privileged by God to live and be alive. I have seen some things in this field of ministry. I have seen. May the Lord help us. I say may the Lord help us. Hmm. I say may the Lord help us. May God show up for you false accusation. The second example I want to bring out for us is Joseph. Do you know Joseph? You remember Joseph the dreamer? <laughs> Listen, brother, every evidence was in the favor of Potiphar's wife. Sam, sister, listing. Stop, stop, stop jumping into a conclusion. Every evidence was in the favor of Potiphar's wife. Every, every, every evidence. If I was the lawyer in the court or I was the judge, I will nail Joseph beyond the nail myself. We must learn to separate facts from truth. I repeat, we must learn to separate facts from truth. There may be a fact, it may not be the truth. Nothing Joseph said could vindicate him. Nothing, no. read your Bible, nothing. He was face to face with prison. Do you know who I'm talking about, Joseph? His father has done his funeral a long time ago because his own brothers hated him. His own brothers. He was face to face with prison. His mother had died. His mother had died. He doesn't have mother again. He was far away from father who loved him. His brothers couldn't even endure him at home. They sold him away, throw him into the pit. They had to kill an animal. Do you know what it takes? for a shepherd to kill an animal. Shepherds can kill human beings instead of killing animals. Oh yes, yes man. They rather kill a village than to kill one animal. You touch the animal, but these shepherd boys, 
prefer to kill an animal and, and send their brother to slavery. That is not where I'm even going. How many people said, do you know many people said that that is how liars cry? Joseph was crying. Potiphar's wife said, yes, he did it. Look at his cloth. Jo Joseph was crying. But people said, ah, you see, you see his eyes. You see his eyes. That This is how you know all these hardened criminal. He did it. Madam cannot be lying. They cry after their wickedness. The boy was crying. He was sentenced. He was sentenced. This boy has suffered hatred from whom? He has suffered negligence, a lot of things. He was face to face with a Jezebel Potiphar's wife, with a woman that cannot close her legs. He was face to face with prison. Listen, let me quickly explain something to you, brothers and sisters. Every other thing that happened to Joseph was a result of what he said and what he saw. Every other thing in his life, he, he had a dream, he saw. He told his brethren, they hated him. He saw a brother doing some wrong things, he got home, when he saw that, he got up, he told his, his, his father about it. So they hated him the more. So, so it, everything he has faced in his life was as a result of what he said or what he saw. But this one was a result of what he never did. Look, it is easy to say, uh, uh, what is there? If they have not lied against you, please, please, you don't know how painful it is. When people say you did what you never did, but you were on the scene, you were at the scene of the, of the incident, but you never did it. But do you know how many people in jail? Do you know how many people in prison going through court cases upon court cases, but they didn't do what they are accused of doing? Let me tell you some facts here about Joseph. I will give you facts why myself will nail Joseph. Can I tell you? Let me tell you quickly because of time. I'll tell you quickly. Number one, the fact was that Joseph was in that room. Yes, he was in the room. He was in that room. The question, Joseph, did you ever enter that room on that day at this time and this time? The answer would be yes. He was in the room. Number two, Joseph and the woman must have touched themselves during the struggle of resistance. Joseph was struggling to escape. His hand may have touched the woman's breast. The woman's hand may have touched Joseph. They were struggling. Joseph was trying to remove himself from the situation. So he must have touched. Number three, the cloth belonged to Joseph. The woman had the cloth. Look at the cloth. This is his cloth. Is this, they say, Joseph, is this your cloth? He said, yes. Okay. It's a fact. Number four, Joseph did not shout. But it was the woman that shouted. Uh -huh. They asked him, Joseph, when this thing was done, did you shout? They, he said, no. I, I didn't shout. It's madam. He said, okay. You didn't shout, Abby. You didn't shout. Okay, we shall see. All right. Number five, Joseph was a stranger. He was the odd one out. Probably every other person there were Israelite that their parents released to go and serve in the palace. He was the one that was brought. He was a stranger. You will say, okay, okay. Number six, he was pissed in the battle of wares with the woman of the house. How far can he win? How far do you think this case can go in favor of Joseph? But it was a fact. Number seven, he was a slave. He was not only a stranger, but he was a slave. And we have been talking about stewardship. You understand that a slave has no right. He was a slave. Finally, number eight, number eight facts. He had no witnesses because he was the only one there at the time. He had no witnesses. He had already run away. Immediately, Madame shouted. Other people came. They saw Madame with the cloth. They saw the, the, the wife with the cloth. So that was what they saw. They didn't even see Joseph, but they said it was Joseph's cloth. 
Some people were there in the house. They have to be in the side of the on the side of the madam of the house. They said we saw Joseph. We saw him run out like this. He ran out. Ah, thank God, madam shouted. Though thank God, madam shouted. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, despite all these facts, it was not the truth. Me and you, we are reading it today now. We are not the ones saying that, ah, it's not the truth, too, but how many has happened in our today world that we have joined our own mouth to condemn others, to, to, to clap for false accusers. False accusation takes a tiny bit of truth and they add lies upon lies upon it just to nail you. I have learned over the years in my ministry never to judge any matter after hearing one side of the story. Mm, no way, I won't. I want to hear both sides of the story. Brothers and sisters, what have you heard? Yes. What have you heard? Have you verified? Have you verified? Why are you broadcasting what you don't know? Listen, beloved. Listen, listen. Let me say this clearly. It is okay to suffer for a crime you committed. If I do it and I'm suffering for it, let me suffer for it. It is okay to, cover, to, to suffer for a crime you committed, but it is very painful to suffer for a crime you never committed. It is painful. It is heartbreaking. It can destroy your career. It can destroy your life. Joseph couldn't even afford a lawyer. He couldn't afford a lawyer. What about Jesus? That was the first place that Pastor B read. That was the first place he read about Jesus. Jesus was confronted with this kind of thing also. Pilate said, I have found nothing against this man. I have found nothing. They said, sir, sir, sir. He said he will destroy the temple and he will build it after they say, say, is the temple still there or has it broke? He said, they say it's still there. Then why has it broken? He said, no. And they, they, he said he was going to die and resurrect it all day. Is that why you guys now wanted to kill him so they can resurrect all day? What has this man done? There are some people, sometimes you look at what they did, you cannot see the head, you cannot see the tail. Pilate said, I didn't find anything. You know what they said? It's in your Bible. Do you know what they said? Let his blood be upon our head and on our children's head. When, when a false accuser means to bring you down, <laughs> he doesn't care the causes that come upon him. He doesn't care what, because she can't have her way, she will do everything to bring you down. And you know what? They always have supporters. The bloggers are there. Oh, yes. They are just waiting for a small thing. They pick it, bam, and then they blow it out. So many years ago, I was reading a column, one of the bloggers, not too long here, yeah, reading one of the bloggers, and he said, and he, and, and he, he said that, uh, they asked him a question, why do you always like to say bad things about some people? He said, that is how we make our money. Mm. But they made their money, you join them but you don't know what is going on. Listen, brother, listen, sister, if they can accuse Jesus, your savior, my savior, then I am not prophesying doom, but just get ready. You will be accused too. Yes, you'll be accused too. Even the Bible said Jesus went about doing good. Didn't you read it? Yes, he went about doing good, healing all that was oppressed of the devil. Yet, he was falsely accused. Look, sir, look, man, no matter how good you are, there are some people who, for some reasons, will not just like you. It doesn't matter how you try. I'm telling you, it doesn't matter how you try. You want me to tell you about another example, number four? Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth. 
Mephibosheth, when Absalom drove, drove David out of the throne, and David went into the wilderness, Absalom was the son of David, and he drove his father out of the kingdom because of a conspiracy. While David was in the wilderness, Ziba, you know Ziba, Ziba, <laughs> Ziba was the servant to Mephibosheth as ordered by David because of Jonathan, his friend. Ziba went to the wilderness and meet with David. And David asked, he said, Ziba, where, where, where did you leave your master, Mephibosheth, cripple, in that kingdom that is dangerous? And he said, sir, don't mind him, he has turned against you. Ziba lied against Mephibosheth that he was, he, 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 he was rejoicing that David's misfortune was as a result of what David did to the house of Saul. But that was a lie. The day that David returned, God brought David back into the land. That same day, brothers and sisters, that very day, that very day, <laughs> David looked at Mephibosheth and said, Mephib, Mephibosheth, why are you looking so haggard, ashes on your head, you are so lean, you are not eating, what is wrong with you? David, Mephibosheth told him, he said, my master, my lord, since the first day you left this palace, I have been fasting and praying for you to return. And David said, ah, ah. but that was not what, what Ziba told me. Ziba said, you have joined Absalom and you have turned against me. He said, master, it's not true. That was the end of Ziba and his generation. His generation was made to become slaves forever to Mephibosheth. Brothers and sisters, what I'm talking about is a very dangerous thing. Have they accused you of taking another person to the hotel? Have you heard things? What have you been accused of? It's a combo. It's part of the deal. As long as you are innocent, God will vindicate you. You don't, need, you don't even need to do too much. God will vindicate you. It may take time. That is okay, but God will vindicate you. Number five, example, Hannah. Do you know that even Hannah's pastor accused her of being a drunkard just because she was facing too much troubles in her life that she couldn't explain? And her mouth was moving, but no words were coming out. She said, I'm a woman of a sorrowful countenance. You know the most painful part of betrayal? Brothers and sisters, the most painful part of false accusation is that most time it comes from people you know and you respect and you trust so much. Yes, that's the most painful part. People you thought were on your side. Yes. May God vindicate you, sir. May God vindicate you, man. He has helped me. Oh, oh my God, he has helped me. If I begin to tell you what I have seen in life, in ministry, in this work of God. Why do people accuse people falsely? Why? Why do you think that people accuse people falsely? Number one, there are people that make a trade from false accusation. Look at Zacchaeus. He said, if I have taken anything from anybody falsely, I will return it for food. Look at that man, that man that was that journalist, that journalist that was met at the airport. He said, he said, if we don't do it, we will not make our money. It's our trade. There are people that rise on the tears of others. There are people that, that climbs up to position on the blood tears of others. Do you think it was easy? for Jesus' sweat to become as thick as blood. And then Judas Iscariot came and kissed him, his own. He looked at him, he said, Judas, 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 you betray your master with a kiss. Ah, Judas, you, you. And do you know Judas and Jesus were from the same tribe? Let's not go into those, that would be a deep exegesis. 
People accuse people for because it's part of their trade. Number two, they do that in order to discredit you. That is why the first place they run to, they run to are the people that trust you with their lives. That, that, anybody that is accusing for if they, if they, the first place they go are those people that trust you with their lives. Just to discredit you. Number three, because of envy. Envy. You will say, what do I have? Hey, what do I have that they want to envy me about? Yes, you may not know. You may not know. People can go to any length when they are envious of you. I repeat, people can go to any length when they are envious of you. Do you know how many people have lost, a, lost positions, lost jobs because of false accusations? Finally, number three, people accuse people falsely because they want to stop you. They want to discourage you. Don't give them the opportunity. When you quit, then they are happy. Yes, that is what they want to achieve. The day they raise that rumor about you, and then you can no longer preach, and then you can no longer sing, and then you can no longer do what God called you to do, you have made them winners. May they not win over you. May their voice not be last that will be heard. May, may they not have upper, upper hand over you in the name of Jesus. That is what the devil does. He, 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 he wants to discourage you. Ultimately, he wants to stop you. He wants to reduce your speed. He wants to weaken your resolve. He wants to weaken your strength. He wants to destabilize that marriage. He wants to reduce your passion. That's why when false accusations begin to come to some people in the church, people that were very vibrant before and doing something, they begin to go weak. They begin to go weak. They begin to go down. They, you, ah, this person, he used to bubble and do the things of God, but false accusation. The people that are raising false accusation will not come and do it, all, but the people that are doing it to be receiving the heat of the false accusation. Now, in the married pastor, now, I will not see the way that they greet. You don't see the way that they look themselves. Ah, ah. So is it easy? Is it easy? They will turn that person to the subject of discussion in their house. May God deliver you from the rumors, from the rumors that have been raised to destroy you in the name of Jesus. How do you handle false accusations? This is where I will stop. How do you handle it? How do you deal with it? How do you deal? If you have not seen it, I pray may you not see it too. It is a pain. It is painful. It is painful. It is painful. Especially when you see that it is the people you are dying for that is carrying the room up and down to destroy you. It is painful. Yes, it is painful. Number one, Matthew chapter 27, verse 12. Can you please read this, Pastor? This is very important. This was how Jesus Christ handled false accusation. This was how Jesus handled it. Do you know how many stewards that have been sent packing of, out of the house because they were framed up by their own fellow stewards? They were framed up with things that they know nothing about. A brother told me so many years ago, he said, Pastor, he said, Apostle, I don't want to greet any woman in this church again. Because greeting, just greeting, raised suspicion. And the house of this woman, the husband said, you are marrying him. You are marrying that. I'm like, <laughs> you that you are pointing fingers at that person maybe it is what you are doing maybe that's what you are doing I called the man I said sir do you trust your wife he said yes then why are you accusing her of this I said let me tell you something it is because you are not faithful. That is why you are seeing your unfaithfulness in another person. It is your unfaithfulness you are seeing in another person. 
He said, yeah, yeah sir, uh, you know, I know that's my weakness. You have it as your weakness. Must you transfer it? May your strength not be weak. I say, may your strength not be weak. May they not overpower you. This mouth can break. This mouth can make. Don't put your ears down for false accusation. It will break you down. Matthew 24, verse 12. Sir, is it 24 or 27 verse 12? 27, 27, sir. Matthew 27, 27 verse 12. But it says, and when he was accused of the chief priests. When he was God, accused of the chief priests and the people. He answered nothing. He answered not a word. Hello, sir. Hello, ma. Don't try to defend yourself. Ah, uh, yes, 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 yes. I know what you are trying to say. It's hard. Yes, yes, this is difficult. This is hard. Because that is when you want to say, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. You want to talk. You want to talk. That is when you want, ah, that is when you are crying. You want to talk. You want to even curse. You want to curse. My son, Pastor De Rock said, Apostle, sometimes it's like I want to curse them. I say, relax. Relax. I came back from Joss. From my master's, uh, when I went to just for my master's degree, just uh, the capital of Plateau State in Nigeria. And then I came back, and one of the wonderful elders in the church came to me and said, Papa, I said, yes, sir. He said, so, so, and so rumor came up about so, so, and so, pastor. I have handled it, and I have settled the old stuff. It was not true. It was false. I said, God bless you. I hugged him. Till today. That my younger pastor never heard about it. It was never said. It was never done. It never happened. It was as if I never heard it. It was silenced. It was because it was a false accusation. The people that are bringing false accusation to you, take them by the hand and say, let's go to this person you have brought this matter now. Let's go and meet him. They will run away. They will change their word. They are poisonous to your marriage. Stop listening to them. They are poisonous to your business. Stop listening to them. They are killers of your department in the church. Don't listen to them. Jesus answered them not a word. Pilate got angry. <laughs> I'm talking about false accusations. False accusations. False accusation. Pilate got angry. What? Can't you talk? <laughs> he was looking at you. Can't you talk? Don't you know I have the power to free you or to kill you? Jesus. That was when Jesus now looked at him and shook his head. He said, it is not, it's, not, it's not you that I blame. It is the people who hand me over to you that I blame. He said, because if they didn't bring me here, you wouldn't talk what you are saying. He said, you don't have power anywhere. He said, my kingdom is not of this world. Pilate adjusted his seat. This man I'm talking to, I don't understand it. He said, my kingdom is, Jesus, look at the way Jesus was talking. He shook his head. On the cross, one bastard guy, he rose up again and said, did you not say you are, you are God? Can't you come down and deliver all of us? Oh, he should come down and deliver you and you are making mouth like that? And the other fellow prisoner told him, shut up your mouth, keep quiet. What's wrong with you? You are face to face with death. You are not even still sober. And he turned to him. He said, Master, remember me when you come to prayer. Jesus said, you don't need baptismal class. You don't need baptismal lessons. You don't need new convert class. Today, today, you will be with me in paradise. Because he didn't falsely accuse, he spoke in favor. He didn't alter a word. You know why you shouldn't talk? Let me tell you why you shouldn't talk. In trying to defend or explain yourself, you will raise more suspicions. Don't explain. You don't owe anybody any explanation. Don't explain yourself to anybody. Two people cannot go naked in the marketplace at the same time. Yoruba people have one proverb that says, if you are bathing 
and you hang your towel and your cloth, you know those village places where people bath, how they take their bath. He said, and a madman runs and take your cloth and your towel and run away. He said, will you come out of the place and be chasing after the madman? <laughs> if you do that, they will say it is two people that is now mad. It is not one person. Keep quiet. Don't talk. People are not even interested in hearing your own side of the story anyway. How many people will you explain to? Seth, how many? How many? Those who were not there said you slept with another person's wife. Those who were not there, who were not there, they said they caught you in the very act. They were not there. They didn't see. They said they caught you in the very act. They didn't bring the man along. They didn't bring the man. Honestly, to me, that was the most difficult case Jesus ever handled. But he appeared so simple. He bent down. And with the wisdom of God, he said, he that is without sin, let him cast the first stone. They all took off. People will believe what they choose and not what you say. I repeat to you, I repeat to you, hello, sir, hello, ma. People will believe what they choose, not what you say. Maintain your focus. That's the second thing. Number one, don't answer them. Number two, maintain your focus. Keep your cool. God will defend you. Stop shouting all over the place. Forget it. This is when some people that have money, they want to go and take lawyer, will go to court. You don't need it. You are wasting your money. Very soon, people will rise against your accusers and they will defend you. Use your energy to remain focused. Stop trying to explain yourself to people. That pastor, hmm, hey, another one has happened. Another one has happened. Clap a board. Blogger. Use your energy to remain focused. Use your energy to remain focused. Do your assignment. Do what God asks you to do. I remember Bishop Coca. Oh my God. Bishop Coca of late. Oh. Bishop Coca of blessed memory. Charismatic. Many of you may not know of Bishop Coca. Many of you may not know Bishop Coca. Bishop Coca was so anointed that at Bishop Idaosa, go and meet Bishop Coca. But Bishop Coca's wife killed him. Not with knife, not with stone. He killed him. Bishop Coca's wife told him face to face, I will destroy your ministry. It was the wife. It was the wife who said it. I will destroy. When Bishop Coca is in the church on the altar preaching, the wife will drive Bishop Coca's Mercedes Benz, Mercedes 230, those days. Fine Mercedes Benz. Those were the car those days. He would, she would drive the car to Oboni Fraternity where they do meeting in Oboni. It's, a, it's, a, it's an occultic place. She will leave the car there, take bike, and come to church. And when they are passing, before coming back to church, when members, because members pass through that place, you tell them, this is where your bishop is taking his power. This is where your bishop comes to take power. The wife, the wife. What about Apostle Ayo Dele Baba Lola? The wife. It was said that his wife will lock him inside room, not to go to a crusade to preach. And Apostle Ayo Baba Lola will jump through the window and go. I know of a pastor. A pastor that suffered in the hand of his wife. What I'm not talk, just talking about wife. There are also husbands that destroy the life of their wives because their wife have answered the call of God. And sometimes it's not even in ministry. It's in the general world that these things happen. This pastor, a CAC pastor, the wife will fight him. The wife will do everything. The wife will scatter women in the church. Do and undo. On this faithful day, if the man is preaching on the altar, the wife will come and meet him, drag him, and start fighting him on the altar in church. I don't know whether my wife will remember this story. It was one of my pastor friends that shared this with me in CAC. They will pull, they will pull the man from the altar, and they will be fighting. The man will run away. The church members were, were, were having pity on their pastor. They, oh, God. 
Where did pastor get this kind of woman? One faithful Sunday, he was preaching on the altar. He couldn't take it again. The woman was coming with full form, enter inside church, was coming straight to the altar. The pastor kneeled down and shouted, God, stop him, stop her. Oh, God, stop her. She, he said it in Yoruba. Instantly, the woman dropped down dead before the whole church. Instantly, she dropped down dead. God was fed up also. Yes, God was fed up. God was fed up. Let God defend you. Let God fight for you. Don't fight for yourself. I'm talking to you from experience. Let God fight for you. Many people have died mysteriously because they accuse other people falsely. It doesn't, look, it doesn't have to be a pastor. Once you carry a false, false accusation against somebody, you will not go free. Oh. You have destroyed somebody's peace. You have destroyed somebody's marriage. You have destroyed friendship. You have destroyed friendship. You have scattered church. You have scattered family. Face your assignment. Listen, there are different anointing. Can I round up? I think uh, I've gotten to, oh man, time is gone. Let, let me just round up. There are different type of anointing. God told, told Elijah to anoint three people. When Elijah, Elijah was tired, he said, God, I want to die. I don't want to live again. I want to die. God, they go and anoint Elijah, Elisha, go and anoint, anoint Jehu, and go and anoint Ahaziah. He said, Elisha will take over from you. But Jehu, I anoint Jehu with the anointing to kill every member of the house of Ahab for what Ahab did to Naboth. So the anointing on the head of Jehu was not to raise the dead, was not to heal the sick, was not to deliver from Ebola or from, or from coronavirus. It was not to counsel and, and let the Lord bless you. No, that was not the anointing on top of Jehu. The anointing on top of Jehu was to kill every member in the house of Ahab. And finally, Jezebel. And the dogs licked up the flesh and the blood of Jezebel. Immediately that was accomplished. The ministry and the anointing on the head of Jehu finished. The assignment finished. That was what God anointed him to come and do. Finally, show them love. Show them love. Pretend as if you didn't hear all the things they've been saying against you. Show them love. When, I lo when me and my wife, we lost our twins, do you know the things we had? Some people say, ah, they have used the children. No, oh, that is what they, these people do nowadays. People, people said things. And when you begin to trace it, you discover that it is from the same people inside the church that you are laboring for in the day, in the night. These are the same people. May the Lord help us. Forgive them, love them. Go to God in prayer. If they are fellow pastors like you, because you need to be in the ministry to know what I'm talking about. If they are fellow pastors like you, they invite you, go and, stick, go and preach for them. Preach for them and pray for your accuser. Pray for them. Anything you are going through and you pray and God has not changed it, probably God wants you to learn something. He wants you to go through it. So start praying, God, give me grace to go through it. Sometimes we should pray, God, give me grace to go through it. Not God, take it away. The Lord will help us. Time will fail me to enter into the problem, the, the causes upon the head of a false accuser. There are causes, so it's a dangerous ministry. False accusation ministry is a dangerous gift. If it's a talent, it's a talent to kill. Drop it. Drop it. Drop it. Oh, no man, anything but love. May the Lord help us. May the Lord keep us. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon us. May the, Lord, may the Lord's face and his blessings rest upon our life. May your marriage not break. I pray for you today. Your home will not scatter. Your ministry will not be destroyed. You know, this, this world is a circle. This world is round. Mm. 
Science says it's spherical. You know, what I'm trying to say is this. Be careful what you wish for somebody else. Mm, be very, very careful. You may be laughing today at, at that person. <laughs> you never know that you may be in that same position tomorrow. I told one sister in the choir in Nigeria those days, in one of my former churches, she didn't allow the choir leader to have peace. I said, come, my daughter. I said, you don't know. Tomorrow you may be in this position. It is what you sow, you reap. When she became a choir leader, <laughs> her best friends in the choir turned against her. Mm -hmm. I say, you see, that was what you caught it for. May the Lord help us. May the Lord help us. I'm going to stop here. There's a lot, a lot to share as reg regarding this. A lot of experience. But I beg you, trust your husband, trust your wife. Don't give place to the devil. That is what the Bible says. He say, give no place. Give no place. Because there are people that... There are people that want you. There are people that are still have eyes for your wife. They want to destroy your marriage so that they will have their way. Celebrate what God has given you. Stand together. And the Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus. Be a steward that will not bring shame to the master. In Jesus' name.